you can call it it's more like the art of science. Uh, uh, and we talk about uh, you know D D zero is your emergency response. D one a uh, team build uh, you know team formation. Uh, D two uh, issue identification. Uh, and and I recall it it's not a symptom you wanna really get to the issue. And then uh, you know internal containment action so that you can you can uh, you know keep the life going going right. And then you come to the root cause analysis. And in the root cause analysis, the test, uh, best way to, to do it is uh, 5Y is a very good way. Okay. 5Y is a. No. Okay. okay, so we said uh, 5Y is a, is a very good uh, good cause analysis tool. And uh, from the example we talked about, uh, that the gentleman said about the machine you know, getting uh, out of control. Right? That's more like a technical word for anything that went bad. Uh, you want to go back to it, right? Why, why machine is getting bad, you know? Is it, is it a lack of preventive maintenance? Maybe, you know, not alignment for the bearing, those stuff. So, so you can keep going through steps to, to find out really what the root cause and then address it. So D3 is, uh, D4 is uh, just the identification of the root cause. And then the D5 is choose and verify permanent character action. So, the first thing is you want to list your possible and potential current reaction. For some of the issues, you can fix it in several different ways. Uh, as it is in terms of the machine, we said maybe you know it you increase your preventive maintenance. You know, shorten the cycle, maybe you know your machine you know, would, would not do it. Uh, that it may increase your maintenance cost, but that, so that's one way of doing it. Uh, the other would be maybe you know go for the deep and uh, why it's not giving you intended life. Uh, maybe the alignments of the bearings are not good uh, uh, or anything like that, right? So so you you may want to go for the steps and then that would be a correction in uh, in your uh, re setup of the machine, recommissioning or what you. So so there could be potentially several ways to rectify your issues. And then, so first you want to list all of them, and then, then you, you should make a conscious decision which one you're going to pick, it. or maybe a combination of which factory uh, actions you're going to do to address that particular issue. So, so that, that's also, right? I think a very systemic way of uh, analyzing your issue and then you know, laying out all the options you have for factory action and then picking the right one. So that's uh, pretty much about the D5. And now, you know, of course, uh, in a thinking way, it's, it's kind of a simple. You may have a complex problem, which is very hard to fix it. And, uh, and you know, sometimes it's very capital intensive as well. Maybe you know, your machine is not capable of uh, delivering this kind of a criticism that you have, then, you know, somebody will look for it. New machine, which is you know, which is uh, which is more control and can give you that criticism uh, and stuff like that. Now, you, even if you, when you identify the issues, the D6 is about the implement in the characterization. And now this is more like I'm going to D D8, okay. I'm not, right now I'm skipping the global D8 aspect which is the, the scale point. So please remind me if I forget, uh, but you know, once I go through the D7, I'll come back to that global, you know, what is the scale point aspect. Right now we're talking about the causal factors, you know, what is causing the issue, and then you're trying to fix those issues. Uh, so when you do that, 
and to essence, you want to verify that it's it, it, it fixed your issues. Now, how, how are you going to validate that? Any, any volunteer? Generally, you want to do some kind of a controlled production and then, you know, do your measurements or you, you do maybe a your disruptive testing to find out that, you know, whatever issue you had, it, uh, you know, it has been resolved, right? So, so you, you know, and, and usually in the, in the beginning phase, you may want to collect a lot of data to make sure that, you know, your, your issue has been resolved. Yes. We, we normally do MSA measurement system and analysis mm -hmm. to see how the mission is now coming. And uh, then there are uh, a metrics involving uh, external customer complaints and how many people are done. For instance, we work with Walmart and IKEA. And we use the same gate before. It was a uh, system. And uh, today in the morning I got an email to submit it to report. But that is being uh, you know, uh, monitored by our customer. Yeah, yeah, of course, that, that's what it's like. Uh, I work for OEM, so uh, I get a lot of ideas from customers and uh, I prove it and uh, then we, sometimes have a, yeah. we have a and click uh, view, that is a global platform where our KPIs are being displayed. So we can align our internal data, external and we correlate. And uh, so for lab testing, we follow ISO 170. And around login test that we can support the data test or with China and Turkey to correlate our results where we are getting. Uh, so now those are, of course, don't, don't take it away with the jargon. So every industry, every product has its own uh, nomenclature, its own uh, KPI, yes, key, key performance indicators. But, but you, you should have some, some, uh, some way of measuring your, your performance, right? So even the defect is usually defined in, in second term, right? Uh, and it, it can be as simple as it doesn't fit well, you know, it doesn't fit. Uh, or your gaps are higher for visual appearance, or the surface finish is, uh, is not acceptable, or, or if your measurements are out, or your, your, the, 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 whatever you have it, uh, like in the textile, it doesn't sustain the wash cycles, whatever wash cycle it should sustain, and, and stuff like that. Right? But, but yes, uh, your customers, a lot of customers, I was asked when we were sort of on a break, that a lot of customers ask for when you do an NG. One is if your customer wants it, you're going to have to do it. But otherwise, in the technical ways, generally you don't want to create an AD kind of efforts. There's a lot of efforts for your very trivial issues. No, you can really use a good tool for a chaos. Yes. If you don't have operating quality operating system. But if you have a quality operating system and uh, you are getting any issues, this is the right way to handle it using an AC. So, so we talk about the uh, D4, which is a, uh, you know, so the D4 was the root cause analysis. D5 is uh, choosing a permanent corrective action. Uh, and in D6 is you, you implement and validate your character action. Yes. When you say D4, there is a escape point. Yes, yeah, so I said I'm going to point in AC report. Yeah, I'll come back to it. Because uh, I said right now we are focusing on on the carbon factor. Now, you know, keep your, keep your ears focused. Carbon uh, factor. One is the what is causing the issue, right? Causal factor. So first you do your D4 for causal factors, D5, what is the correct reaction for causal factor, and then you know, D6 you implement the correct reaction. And you verify that whatever you implemented is addressing the issue, resolve your issue. Uh, now let's come back to the escape point. Most of the production we do is uh, uh, we we have a we have some kind of a check in the system, and those checks are to, to to avoid that the problem you know, the problem is the pass on to our customer. So in in, in a in a factory environment, if you are using a control plant, usually what you would expect is our customer our, our supplier every shift they would they would take out a couple of parts, 
they would uh, either put on a gauge, you can say, you know, kind of pretty slow. Hey, they were going to put it on a gauge, verify that, you know, their part fits well and stuff like that. So they did some measurement. For the color, again, you know, sometimes requirement can be, depending on the variance, so, you know, can be every hour. Maybe you take out a part from the line, take it to the lab, and the spectrometer, you know, you, you measure the color, make sure the color is the what it's intended to be. So, so in a controlled environment, you can have a you know, kind of a verification uh, back into your, your process. If you don't have a verification into your process, then, then you know, most likely you're going to be keep passing on your issues to your customers. And you don't have any, any internal check into it. You know, it's not a very good situation, especially if you're shipping over the, you know, long lines and, and you have a lot of complications. So, so most of the process we design we do design some kind of a verification into it. Like in the art industry, we, we use a lot of gauges. You know, means the gauge, gauges kind of provide the, the form and the function of the fitness of the part. <coughs> or mechanical, you know, you, you might have some uh, destructive testing, some, uh, some user testing, uh, frequency would be lower for those. But it's stuff like that. So, so you, you should have some kind of a control back into your process. Now this escape point, which was later on introduced into the AT and it became more like a global AT process, is, is to find out why your internal process didn't, didn't catch this issue. And we call it escape point. So why, why the issue escape out of your factory and pass on to your customer? And so, so if you, you, you have a good, very good control uh, process, then most likely you should have caught it and then you know you could have addressed it. Your customer wouldn't know about it. And, you know, it's still I recommend you do the AFDs and find out what was the root cause of it and you fix it internally. Because you know eventually your escape uh, sort of your process is gonna be fooled and uh, your your issues would pass on to the customer. So so that's again you know you should do both. It. It's a default level, which is root cause. Causal root cause and escape point. What causes the, you know, the, your control or your detection to fail? We call it detection at times, you know, issue detection, right? So, so why it fails? And then similarly, you want to do a corrective action of your, your control process or your detection process so that, you know, similar issues cannot be passed on. And, and then if you want to uh, identify some corrective actions you know, in your detection process, and fix that. So you you did not only fix your causal issues, you know what caused it, but what failed to detect it, and you address that as well. That would be a very controlled good step. So so that you know thanks for bringing it in, and uh, you know and that's why I wanted to just keep this out a little bit parallel. So one you fix the causal issues, and then one uh, you fix the uh, the detection issues. Uh, by the way, if in your, your process you do not have any detection, that's a flat process. You know, you, you, you should have some kind of a detection mechanism. A lot of people have inspection is one time of detection. You know, inspection is, is you know, it's best uh, probably 50% 50 percent, 60 percent of the time. You know, we, may, we are not very consistent. Uh, so we recommend some other, you know, detection based, uh, depending, you know, what kind of a a product you have it, uh, you know, that, that, that's it. Like, like my company invests a lot of money on the gauges for, for forming fitness kind of a part, you know, body parts, and uh, so, so that everybody who builds it, you know, they can verify that, yeah, it's good. <laughs> for the colors, you know, it's easier. For, for functional, you know, like vibration and, you know, for the engines and stuff, yeah, they, they go through the you know, they, they will go through testing every control plan for the every ship. They're going to separate a couple of engines, uh, run them, measure their vibrations at different points, and then, you know, pass it on, right? So, so you should do that. Any, any questions or comments? Well, for a skill point, uh, for improving the detection earlier, we were doing a manual inspection. Yes. When we went to a machine design technology that we could find out that three 
But uh, going back, so you need both, right? The top layers, um, causal factors, you know, you identify, you find solutions, you verify. Similarly, detection, you know, you, you find why, why detection fails, you put a strategy, uh, how to resolve it, and, and then, you know, you verify that it has that been natural. Now we go to the C7, which is the uh, which is uh, no, often a kind of a ignored uh, in a way that uh, a lot of time is not paid attention. But this can be the most crucial in a way to, to avoid future issues. Uh, but, uh, so in that way, yes, you address a particular issue, and and hopefully you know you, you cause it well, you fix it well. And also, you 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 created a robustness in your process that you can detect it in, in future it comes, and you are good. But if you think about what are the other products you may have that can have similar issues, what other processes you do that can have a similar issues? So you 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 think, of course, the system. You take the, the whole factory level, and you then, then you can try to, to do a systemic resolution. That you know how how you can improve the whole factory or you know, your, your your organization that that would have avoided it. And, and then, so at times uh, sometimes it's very difficult. Maybe the issue is very specific and there's no systemic I can think through it. Uh, but often, uh, you know, like we were uh, using a kind of healthy example, having hygiene in the environment, you, you, you just do the sensitivity about hygiene. So sometimes even a systemic, uh, you, you can say, you know, quality sensitive training, you know, a, a, a culture uh, is part of it. But it's very, very broad, very holistic, uh, usually you want to go specific. You can identify some kind of training that everybody should go through. So, yes. to kind of say, you know, be more aware of uh, these issues and, and can, you know, so that they can prevent uh, the root cause of it, you know, rather than uh, getting an issue and then fixing it. It's more like to being uh, in caution, you know, uh, uh, what you would call it, uh, prevention is better than so, right? So, so that kind of a mindset, and of course, you know, I have a, a whole page for you guys to read it and uh, use it. Uh, now we are going to try to jump on that, the last one, and then I would try to to, to grab some discussion. Uh, if uh, oh, once you finish it, you know. Uh, well, I think in fact, I, the Pakistan we are a little bit weak in uh, recognizing uh, success, achievement. Uh, celebrating uh, ourselves, and uh, and that makes us uh, often uh, more cynical. So, so uh, but but this is the process also. Uh, you want to reward people that you know work through it, address some issue, identify you know how, how best to recognize those people and reward them. Maybe some certificates, organizing that them, you know, people that give certificate doesn't cost much. Then. Yeah, but what was the more? Uh, I can't kind of pain. I try to build the team. Uh, you have to be balanced. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure you. How many people work in the team for different things? As a group, as a staff, maybe some, some project. Oh, yeah. Uh, most people they do. So, so, so there are some rules in the team. There are some people who just want to tell you the issues. Uh, there are some people who, who just want to think that you know they can uh, tell you the answers, but don't want to do it themselves. So of course, other people you would be there, but uh, you you want a balance in terms of the recognition that you know uh, a balance recognition that that uh, makes everybody you know keep everybody happy, but also doesn't demoralize you know some people than other people <laughs> because if, if there are some good presenters. You know, they may come and speak in terms of the management better and they may get recognized because the other people who did hard work, if they're not recognized, they're going to be demotivated. So, so you have to be very careful about how you recognize people as well. And uh, so, so there's, you know, there's some uh, description behind this. So with that, I guess, uh, you know, this, this is like 8D. Uh, 
And that the good tool that goes with it is there not, is, is not, you know, there's, there's something in there uh, for you to read it. Uh, uh, and uh, some differences and changes. Uh, there's some write up. I thought, you know, it might help you. Uh, I had, uh, so I'm not going to have, but I like, and, and this is, this, this is really a coach, and especially, you know, as we have it on the page number, what we call here is the five. Yeah. Yeah. If you post this, you live on a home and you go to your office. And you maybe you want to some trivial things if you come to you. Uh, you, you think that discipline you have. You're working with your kids, you're working with your parents. I'm a parent, guys, well, my, my parents as well. And you're working with your house, you're working in a factory environment, you have a big house, all the things. This is very useful tool for you. Yeah. This is the minimum you have to get. And the other help we give, uh, this, this, is a, this is a format to, to record your, your outcome for the ideas. Uh, we, we like to get it to keep it simple, you know, most organizations will be forget that you keep it simple and short. Uh, but of course, if you are doing some testing, uh, for either to analyze it or for, for verification, then you can do that as you say. You know, but, but I would recommend keep, keep the basic document short. Probably two pages is very good enough. And this is a very good uh, AD template because it's a global AD template. Uh, it has all both the escape points and uh, the cause effects of the year and uh, emergency response aspect is here as well. So that, that would be very really handy. And these days, you know, with the Google, uh, and a little bit of the smartness, if you know what you are looking for, you know, it's very easy to search, right? The playing field is very different for, for people who are working in America or people who are working in Pakistan. Uh, so, so you can that's a great advantage. You can, uh, Wikipedia has a lot of information. Google, if you search, you will find pretty much everything there. And, and most of this information. But again, the first two slides, I think it is probably you may not find. So with that, uh, I guess I'm open uh, for you guys if, if somebody has uh, some issues in uh, the environment effect you want to talk about, we can uh, we can talk or or any any specific aspect that uh, I want that uh, detail or. This is basically probably more effective for, for OEMs rather than suppliers because suppliers, they, they prefer going into GS9000. They used to go to GS9000 and now they go into GS9000. So, uh, what is the advantage for a supplier to have this system instead of uh, GS1694? So, so, this is not, one is, uh, this is not either and all. As we said, it's, uh, you know, if, if you are a a good supplier or good, good organization, you should have a quality system. And uh, if you are in auto environment, uh, TS is a, is a good uh, good process uh, specific to the to auto industry. So yes, you should have a TS environment. Within the TS, if you have an issue, then, then probably this is a tool you want to use it. Because this is more stringent. I mean, it has more... Uh, it's, it's, it's just a problem with regulation, right? And besides, if you have a supplier, like if you are kind of a my supplier, uh, my company requires it from each supplier and whenever they, they do the non conformance. I mean, if they have an issue, they have to submit an AP. So since my, it might be your customer requirement. Yeah. Even you if it's not a customer requirement, the probably is a good tool to use it internally if you find issues. And besides most suppliers, they have their suppliers as well. They can, use, they can enforce on their suppliers to use this tool for any, any non conformance that they supply. You know, your tier 2 or tier 3 centers. Most of the suppliers, OEM in Pakistan, they have these systems. I think 100% of the suppliers for Suzuki, Honda, and Indus, they have very, very stringent uh, systems and, you know, their quality checks are very, very 
controlled um, in process quality it is monitored isn't it a very good uh, point? Uh, so let me. Who, who works for uh, one of the art OEM, either Indus or Suzuki? I am for Okay. Okay. So, 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 including you, uh, is, uh, uh, how often you get issues with your supplier? Oh, for supplier, you get a lot of issues all the time. But, so, so, you know, the, so it's just we live in a dynamic environment. There will always be, you know, uh, something goes wrong, uh, something maybe trivial. But so, so OEMs would always be requiring uh, to do the ADs. Uh, I don't know what what process they, they use it here, but like uh, in in America, generally the AD is a standard now. You know, it's not only at, at, at Ford Motor Company, General Motors, others. They all require this, and it's just a, and those people who are working with the supply, like me, in a supply quality, we, you know, we, we, we like to read these reports much faster and much better than somebody. Everybody, everybody comes in and tries to to keep their story in a in a different way, right? It's very hard, to, you know, and then. Uh, then it's very hard to find to learn that uh, what they may be hiding it in the presentation and what they, they may be giving it. So, so this is very you know it's such a format. We learn how to read them very fast to use them, and and then uh, they also get used to uh, you know benefiting from it. But this is a good tool. And, and I'm sure you know anywhere you work. Uh, uh, we don't have a job. Means people are gonna have an issue uh, for one or the other thing, and and uh, they, or even just for improvement. The expectations are improving, so the the custom requirements are improving, and we are always being gonna be challenged for a better and better product, which means you know there'll be quality work for for their and issues will be there for us to solve. Any any other comments? Or question? Yes. And I'll, uh, I'll come back to you. Yes. Yeah. Sir, we have talked very much about the jumping to the conclusion rather than investigation with the girls and finding out that. So, what actually happens in our industry that normally our management wants results faster, quicker. So, what actually happens that we have to jump to the conclusion rather than we want to know. We have to jump to it. I would recommend that you know maybe you guys uh, you go back uh, maybe pass on uh, that you know uh, that oh yeah you know we had this uh, kind of a presentation or lecture at the NAD University they introduce us this tool, you know, and uh, seems like a good tool. So introduce your management to this tool. If they are more interested, they can get more into it, and uh, they, they're going to learn. You know, some companies they call it corrective action report, CAR report, which is a, which is more like a same thinking, but at times they abbreviate it. You know, they they don't go through all the eight steps, uh, like Ford Motor Company itself. Uh, you know, I'm not here to represent the company, I'm my personal capacity, but uh, we have our internal issues, generally we use the color 5D, so we take out some, some elements of it, we make it brief and, uh, and direct, but a lot of other companies, they use, they call it car, you know, uh, customer. Uh, so correct your actions report, and uh, so they may have a format to it, which may be include some element of it, not all of this. So, so there are different versions outside and if you do the research, uh, or you know, correct reactions report, you're going to find formats as well. That's, that's good for that as well. And, uh, and maybe if some company is not into it, that may be a first, you know, right way to start and then you can go more further along. But if you are in an OEM, uh, it's good to require from your customer. You don't have to do work, right? Your customer, your, your supplier is going to do the work, and uh, this is your issue, and then they're going to go through all the all the kind of rigor, rigor analyzing the issues and solving them rather than solving the symptoms. Because what you don't want is you don't want your supplier to solve the symptoms, which means they're going to get into another issue. The area you are referring to is I have capacity over there.
And we have a lot of design work, uh, especially in manufacturing and industrial environment, right? We are kind of second tier. But, but we have to improve. So, you know, no, nobody can, by the way, you know, no nation can become rich by contact manufacturing or just kind of say, you know, uh, trying to manufacture to some, somebody else's uh, designs and stuff like that. Uh, you know, over time we have to learn to, to up our value chain, you know, be creative you know, on our designs, on our customers, and that's, that's how you can get wealth. And, uh, and as an engineer, I'm, I'm sure, you know, we can contribute a lot, but generally the industry is behind, but we engineer also, we are, we are weak in communications, you know. We, we are not very good out, going out, marketing ourselves, marketing the value of engineering, and, and maybe, you know, doing kind of a, a advocacy work, I don't want to use the word le a lobby, but advocacy for engineers uh, in government, in uh, high, high positions and stuff like that. Uh, you know, government provides a lot of services and probably, you know, a lot of engineers would be the best suit for, you know, providing those uh, services and uh, some technical services, but, but we have few engineers over there. But, you know, keep up. Uh, uh, and uh, and hopefully you know be be, be a good uh, advocate for engineers engineers and uh, let us uh, you know together maybe we go the scope of the engineers uh, in the community. I think that would be a good uh, progress for the society as well because we can we have a lot to contribute. Yes. Sir, based on your experience in the field, most of us are from the production department, right? So generally, could you give us any advice that could help us in your future based on your experience? Yeah, you know, first I, I should admit, okay, I'm, I'm not from production. So, so I know I, I don't really have that much experience. Uh, you know, I work in a in an office environment where we have thousands of engineers sitting at work, right, so nice, you know, right, cool environment. But, so for production I know is tough, but uh, I, I guess you have to start where you are and, and you have to show your value, means, you know, and, don't, don't run away from it, means, you know, if it's a heated environment or a little bit of those. But try to just don't do it what, what is being done for forever and ever. Try to innovate, find a better way to do things and, and, and create something more valuable than, than what was in the So this way you're going to, you know, extend your scope. They're going to give you more responsibilities, you know, more, more functions. You can do it, and uh, that will improve your life as well. Can you give us some study Yeah, that's that's interesting. You know, because like my company gives the AD training. It takes like uh, three days course, and they will perform the team to kind of analyze each step, and, and they report out and stuff like that. This was a two-hour session, so we didn't do it. But now, you know, in terms of the examples, uh, like, uh, let me give you one example that recently, you know, a few years back, I came across this was uh, the newer cars, they have a start stop function. The start stop function means, uh, you know, when you go to a traffic light, the, the vehicle, uh, in, you know, will, the engine will turn off. Uh, when the green light, you know, turns in, you 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 put your pedal on the you know on the right uh, on the gas, it's gonna restart. It. So what they were using is they were using the braking function because when you go to the stop, you use the braking. So when the, you apply the braking uh, at the full brake, 
uh, when it's in vehicle for zero, the speed, uh, the engine will turn off. But now that the braking system that they, they used was designed from prior time, it wasn't sensitive. It means they, it had a feedback feedback loop uh, from the like vacuum to to tell the car that okay, it is stopped. Right? It is the engine light in a sort of a stop line has to come on, and some other things happen. Right? When you break it, uh, something happens. But that loop was not uh, that robust. So sometimes it was not stopping the vehicle when it goes there. It was actually it had a minor leak in terms of the seal, so the issue was, you know, coming in. When we, when we use that function, that braking you know, system for that start, start function, uh, we notice that, and uh, as part of the AD, we figure it out, we fix it. So, so, you know, that was one example. But besides, now I work in the service environment. What every day I see is that, you know, supply ship me a left-handed part, label them as a right-handed. Now, I don't open the part, right? I mean, they come in, they go through the dealers, dealer open up a you know, mirror, expecting a left mirror, they got the right mirror, can't use it. They have to send it back. So, so those kind of issues we get a lot. Uh, maybe sometimes uh, the, the team level will be different, you know, some, uh, some different parts they ship it, most of, often, or there is a damage on the parts and stuff. So we do a lot of ideas about that, and now for, for Miss ID kind of issue, so I try to go, go back them, you know, see what kind of a process they have it, and, and you know, do they have a detection in, in their SIS process, because basically it's a de detection, because, you know, service is a bad process, it's not continuous. And, and then I try to, you know, what kind of a tool they use it, maybe visual ads, and every time we, we require the part number to be on the part, so that's verified with, you know, the work order and stuff like that. But, you know, a couple of examples from my work. Yes, you had a question. Uh, we, yeah, we have about the, the time. Uh, five minutes. Five minutes. That's what, what can we uh, can we enrich? So is there any best practices uh, for the human the controlling the of parts? Since many humans uh, they read the stage in the world, so usually you know whenever there is human interaction, it's very hard to get a six sigma quality. You, you will never get it. Yeah. You have to be living with uh, five sigma, maybe four sigma kind of environment. Our service is about four sigma. But, uh, in, you know, now what you can do is, uh, you know, you, 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 your production is usually separate and your, your inspect, you know, packaging and then shipping. So either that packaging and sometimes even production, if, if they dump, you know, different sizes into one rack, you know, they, they mix it there. Yeah. So you have, to, you have to address in the production that they, they, are, they all keep separate. All the bins are properly marked and, you know, they're verified. Then once they come to the packaging, you want to use them as an inspection. So those packaging people, as they start working on it, first they verify whenever they get a work order and start a job. I call it first piece uh, verification. So you require, you know, uh, I require it's a quality inspector or a supervisor or at least another different worker, you know, initial the first work order, you know, first piece on the work order that, yeah, they got the right, right product. But it's still the mixing issue can be there because, you know, you, you don't want to... So what you want to train people is to keep it, you know, while they're working, keep your eyes open, you know, try to, to, to... And these are the features, that's how you can identify them. You know, sizes are very difficult. But generally, you, you want to tell them how, how they can easily detect the different, different parts and the this part. And, and then when you go to shipping, at times, just the shipping level is wrong. Everything else is fine. It's still, you know, you have an issue. So, so you want to bake in the past some verification, everybody has some checklists and things to do. 
and, and that increases the responsibility. If, if you, you want me to look at it, I'll be paid sure. But if you want me to sign on it, that yeah, I checked this thing, this part number, this was there, two, three, four different things you listed, and I sign it, I'm going to be more responsible. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, you are a good audience. Uh, you know, you have a lot of future ahead. Uh, look forward uh, for your success. And thanks for coming. Thank you very much, sir. And a special thanks to for those who came from industry as a participant. Now, as a token of appreciation, we would like to present our memento to Mr. Amin Jirisha. Please come forward and receive your memento, please. Yeah. I guess this is for any day scholars the PI over here. Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, you please come. Sorry. Anjum Shari, please come forward and receive your memento. He is also from NED Scholars. I am Anjum Shari, my classmate from NED, PhD. Mashallah, he was a manager at the Indus, or senior manager, or general manager, and all. Thank you. Thank you very much. This brings to close our session and you should mark your attendance at the department.